second. Okay. Is that is it bright enough? Is it my it is. For now. Just let yeah. me know if like dark for me. So it, you look great. You're not gonna put your hoodie on, right? <laughs> no, we're live. Hi guys, thanks for joining the room. Hello. We'll just a few minutes. Um for more people to join. We got, oh yeah, it's, it's bumping up now. Hey everyone. I'd love to hear where you're all tuning in from. So if, if you wanna share in the chat. I'm based in New York City. Dr. Shu, you are also in New York City. I'm in New York City, I'm 50 blocks away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Safely. <laughs> so, all right, um, we'll give it. Another minute. So how are you doing, Dr. Shu? How's your day been? It's been uh, quite a lot going on. Yeah, it's uh. There's never a dull moment here in uh, New York City in Manhattan, so it's been going really well. Um, staying very busy, keeping up with the with the times and everything. So, okay, well, awesome. We've just set up our Facebook Live. Okay, wow. Hey, Sheila. Oh, Plains my hero. Hey, love that New Hampshire. Nice. So, um, well, welcome everyone. Um, let's see. Okay, so why don't we kick off and then we'll get started and more people will just join. So welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Meta and oh, I'm gonna stop your screen sharing for a second. Okay. So uh, I'm Meta, uh, co-founder of Juara Skincare. Um, Clayton, do you mind if you can stop your screen? Because it's oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Co-founder of Jura Skin Care, and I'm super happy to have you all with me today. We have Dr. Clayton Shu, a good friend, and also a master in, a, a doctor, an, an acupuncturist, um, a Chinese herbalist, and also a master Chai, tai chi master. So um, for those of you, uh, to make sure that we are all in the same room, welcome to our webinars. Uh, this is our Dora Wellness Webinar Series. It's basically um, to help you through these times, basically challenging times, lots of things happening, and we're here to support you and to uh, offer wonderful information to keep you all sane. Um, okay, so um, let me start my screen share. A little technical difficulties today. Um, so the, today's about drinking the correct tea to support you through pandemic times. Um, we're a skincare company, but we believe that beauty is not only skin deep, it's actually a whole mind and body situation. So here we go. Bachuara, for those of us, uh, for the views who is, ugh, for those of you who've heard of us, thank you for being here. And for those of you who haven't, just a little about us and why we're here and um, why this all makes sense. Our line, our brand is inspired by the Indonesian Jammu tradition. Uh, they're ancient health recipes and they use superfoods and exotic ingredients, including turmeric, kombucha, just things that focus on health. It's a 2000 year old tradition um, that focuses on both nourishing the mind and the body. And a lot of it is about ailment prevention. And part of ailment prevention is actually enjoying the experience of what you were doing and also what you were consuming and taking with deep social connection. <clears throat> Um, it's, it's a culture that has healers and families and communities all coming together basically to, um, you know, serve each other concoctions if one is feeling sick or not so good. And, um, it's also about mindful rituals. It's about being inspired in life and, um, adding meaning. So you're not just going through your day doing routine things, but really putting a sense of, um, uh, just, just meaning and purpose to bring you great peace and happiness. So the objectives of these webinars, um, oh, hi, um, Yoshko, do you mind? Um, okay, so, so the objective of these webinars is to connect to the community. Um, and, you know, boy, 
what an opportune, like actually what a crazy time this week is. We, we just have to say it's our platform, our brand, who we are, we are, um, we really focus on and believe in being inclusive, diverse, and committed to growing together. So uh, we're not just a skincare company. When the pandemic first started, the first thing we thought was, what is it that we could do to help our community, help people, bring people together in conversations and that are supportive? So um, for this week, we are just, you know, just, we have to say as a brand, we're, we're horrified. And we're really upset at seeing the social injustice. And we really, um, we support, we support the Black Lives Matter movement and we want to see an end to racial injustice because that is something that's very near and dear to us as well. Um, and we are committed to striving even harder to bring just inclusivity and togetherness into the norm of conversations because that is how we grow and become stronger together. Um, our platform's also about offering valuable content. We want to make sure that what we deliver, uh, that the hour that you leave at the end, you feel lighter and you feel like you have gained something that's nourished yourself, whether educationally or spiritually. Um, and so we only bring on people who we have trust and vet to offer you content. And we're also a platform for presenters. It's not just us um, talking about us to you, but we're offering some <laughs> community. <laughs> So if it's something that you want to collaborate on together or you just you just know people who have something to say and they have a voice and they might not have a platform, we're here to support and promote. So that is the objective of these webinars. Today, who do we have? Dr. Shu. Um, Dr. Shu is, well, Dr. Shu has been a longtime Chinese medical New Yorker. He's um, been here since before 9-11, had been here through the Northeast blackout, Hurricane Sandy. And during these times, he's adapted his clinical practice to benefit the victims and help the New York City, um, basically help New York City recover. Um, he was trained by the godfather of modern acupuncture in Tianjin, China, which is the neurological capital of China. Um, uh, which explains why you are a very accomplished um, acupuncturist, specifically working with stroke patients, specializing in stroke patients, and he trained a Tai Chi master who's been practicing for over 25 years, so do not mess with him. <laughs> During the COVID pandemic, Dr. Shu's written over 100 Chinese herbal formulas for patients in need and has, has spoken around the world. Maybe not spoken around the world during the pandemic, but before the pandemic and after. And he was featured in Reuters News speaking about Chinese herbal medicines and featured in the book Creative Success Now, How Creatives Can Thrive in the 21st Century by Yale professor who coaches musicians in becoming entrepreneurs. So quite the renaissance man. Um, so today we're going to talk about, well, I'll, I'll just turn it over to Dr. Xu who will explain to us um, all about teas and what I do encourage all of us, because this is really for you, you get out what you put in it. So we welcome questions. We want welcome interaction. Um, you know, put in chat and you can Q&A or you can put in the chat section. The chat section defaults to panelists only, but if it's something that you want to share with everyone, just make sure it says, you know, for panelists and for everyone. And we'll make sure we get to your questions. Uh, Dr. Shu also has a free offer for all of you who've attended at the end. So we hope you stay tuned um, and we'll give you contact information. So, Let's take a deep breath and sip your own tea, which I shall, and Dr. Chu. <laughs> let's get going. Hi there. Uh, I'm actually uh, very honored. Uh, Meta is hosting me for this webinar and to participate and to uh, help out, especially during these difficult times. Um, I and I have had numerous amazing conversations about cultures and about like how our our ethnicity has helped us through like life and everything and and just sharing like what we've learned and stuff so it's been exciting to share and talk to her about trying to get through um like different rituals you want to have each day to kind of help yourself and one of them is tea because the the chinese herbal tradition and the teas um it's a it plays a significant part in the recovery of the world um, and that's why it's exciting even to talk to meta about the Indonesian tea culture and the Indonesian herbal culture. It's like a, it's almost like a new, fresh, new pioneering part of herbal medicine that even I haven't um, ran into very often. So we've had really deep conversations and we wanted to make this, this uh, basically this herbal 
this herbal tea uh, podcast so that you at home feel like you are more empowered and that you can make yourself a good cup of tea that fits what you're feeling at the moment and can balance you and help you to uh, stay strong, stay clear minded. Um, and so that's like a big part of what we're going to do today. So it's going to be part like part knowledge, part teaching, basic Chinese herbal principles, how this works. Um, how does the plant work in general for, for these very famous different Asian teas? And let me just turn on my uh, screen share here so we can, we can get that. Up. Let me get some slides going here. So. Yeah. Are you good with the slides or? Huh? Oh yeah, I'm gonna pull it up so we okay. can see it. This way we can stay. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Great. So today we're actually going to be diving into learning the basics on how to how to drink the correct tea that's going to support you through these pandemic and and um, you know and civil rights times that we're actually living in today. Just when you thought things were coming down, it's actually I'm glad that we're doing this because I think it's even more important now to have a direction and have a way of keeping yourself healthy, keeping yourself calm um, and keeping yourself focused and also keeping your immune system up. But one reason why we talked about doing this workshop was because sometimes we just, we just see this one tea at Starbucks or something like that and then we drink a gallon of it and it's not really helping our body. So I wanted to dive and take us through like a review of like how to understand which tea you can pick seasonally or basically like if there's something going on with your stomach etc we're going to get all into that so first we're going to do a little poll right we're going to see uh which are your favorite teas to the group that's with us live here so all uh, right here we go the poll is up lots of different kinds i always love starting with these polls because we get to hear where everyone's at um yeah. We got all so, sorts of teas. I did. I actually haven't heard about some of. I I wasn't aware of some of these teas actually. Um, so yeah. we'll leave this all open for. Let's give it five more seconds. Yeah. People are thinking. Five, <laughs> four, three. All right, guys. Two, one. Any last votes? All right. Cool. Here, here's the results. Wow, that's, this is really amazing. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, so yeah, so green tea is the most popular. 47% of you um, drink green tea as your favorite. Uh, oolong tea, another wise choice. Very favorite tea, it's very famous out of Taiwan. Uh, black tea, that's a great tea, a strong tea as well, more earthy in aroma. 41% is there. Aged tea, 12%, that's good. We're gonna really talk about that later, okay? Um, let's see, white tea, that's like the baby tea. 6% uh, of us have actually encountered that, so it's a little, little more rare. Um, and then yellow tea is, yellow tea, no one voted yet, but I'm not surprised. Yellow tea, you're, it's gonna be really popular in the next couple years. It's like a, it's like a, it's growing in popularity. There's a special way to treat the tea so that so that it actually uh, oxidizes, have a little more sour taste to it. So this is great. We're actually all very knowledgeable, and of course, herbal teas is great. Um, I'm a big fan of Chinese herbal teas. Now, this is the funniest thing, right? We just looked at seven or eight different teas, but actually, we are literally talking about the same plant this whole time. Even though some of us heard of the red tea, some of us heard of the green tea. Some of us heard of oolong or the aged tea. And the plant that all these teas basically come from is called Camellia sinensis, okay? This is the plant that actually produces every tea we just talked about and more, okay? And how we get these different teas, well, it depends on which part of the plant you're actually brewing or you're actually oxidizing and processing. So it could be, it could be the teeth, it could be the flower, it could be the stem, it could be the root. It could even be the seed of the tea. And depending on the, on the part of the tea, that will tell you actually the function 
So it's great to know that the, the leaf, the stem, the older leaf, the younger leaf produces a different tea, which produces a different effect in your body. So that's why you don't want to just drink one kind of tea all day, all year round. You have to kind of, kind of learn how to read yourself a little bit. And the way we do it in Chinese medicine is we look at the tongue, we look at the pulse, um, we ask really interesting, um, provocative questions about your bowel movements. It's great. <laughs> so, um, so when we do look at parts of a plant and different functions, like I said, we're looking at the roots, the stems, the branches, and the twigs. And what changes and makes all the different teas that we just talked about, whether it's the white tea, the green tea, the yellow tea, the oolong tea, or the black tea, is the percentage of how much of that leaf is actually oxidized, okay? So if the leaf is, is, is brand new, fresh, like a, like a puppy, you know, and, and basically has like white color and white fuzziness, that's a very, very young tea leaf. It hasn't oxidized at all. As it starts to oxidize, it'll turn green. And then depending on what, how you treat it, you can even make it have a yellow quality, okay? But if you see when something's like 60% oxidized, now you're getting an oolong type of tea, which tastes totally different than the white, the green, and the yellow. And if you oxidize it completely, you'll actually start getting a black tea. So from this one leaf, we have about five different flavors, and we also have five different effects on the body. So flavor, oxid oxidation, it's very important, and it's an art, just like wine is an art, tea is an art and how you process it, okay? So just to take it further, really briefly, if we look at the yellow teas, right, the process is actually taking the, the smothered tea leaves, right, and actually putting them in a damp cloth for about 10 minutes. And what happens is, is after oxidation, this dampness creates this yellow effect with the tea and changes the, the flavor. The green tea is picked and immediately what happens is it's, it's dehydrated and it's naturally just let out like across a large table or a large floor uh, that's clean. And it actually starts to just dry up and oxidize on its own. And that's the most popular tea that we had about like 42% of you liked. <laughs> uh, the oolong tea, sometimes it's spelled W-U-L-O-N-G and sometimes it's spelled O-O-L-O-N-G, but it's the same tea. This is a partially oxidized tea, but the oolong tea is actually kind of between a green and a black tea. And what happens is that after they manually oxidize it for 12 to 18 hours, the structure breaks down and releases these oils. And what happens is these oils create a different effect. The oils from tea and the oils from seeds in general in herbal medicine actually has an aromatic and usually like a calming effect on the brain. So I would say during these times, we probably want to all gravitate towards a new long tea, basically. Um, the black tea, which is like the 100% oxidized tea, this varies um, in oxidation from 8 to 12 hours at a temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Even the Indian black teas and the chai teas, oral gray teas, they all have a very similar quality like this. And they all have a deep aroma kind of taste. These are, these are teas that are in milder conditions. And so what happens is they'll produce a less astringent sour taste and more of an earthy burnt taste with aroma, okay? Um, in China, we do drink like green teas, but they always say you kind of want to graduate from green to black or green to red. So you start being attracted more and more to these earthier tones as you keep growing and and uh, making your palate more skillful. Kind of like wine, you know? Except we don't take tea and we don't swish it around like spit it out, we just, we just swallow it, so. <laughs> okay, and then we have the aged teas. So the aged teas, the aged teas are ideally aging at a temperature between 140 Fahrenheit and 158 Fahrenheit. Uh, they have 60 to 70% humidity and they're actually in a dark room with good air circulation. Okay, so these factors are going to create a good quality aged tea. And I'm going to talk about aged tea towards the end because we're going to then bring up a really special combination tea that you kind of already know and indirectly. So. Okay, 
before we get further into teas, let's talk about the water. So like in tea culture, uh, can you shift it to the right a little? How about that? <laughs> Technology is amazing. Okay, so steeping the, steeping the tea in the right temperature and the right quality water is huge in tea culture, right? You don't want to get this beautiful tea and then get like some dirty, unclean water to like basically take these leaves that are prepared in such a way and just demolish its, its like delicateness and its flavor and its medicinal value, right? So the water that you use with your tea is almost as important as the tea itself, okay? And interesting enough with, with really, really good tea masters uh, in different regions, they usually play a game where they'll, they'll drink tea, right? This, there was a famous tea master named Lu Yu, and he was famous for saying that the suitable water for tea has to come from the region that the tea is from. So this is, this is very, very macrobiotic, right? Like, you know, very seasonal. Um, and then they say, if you're a very good tea drinker, when you drink that tea, you can almost tell the other person where that water came from. So imagine how fine-tuned your palate is to the soil, the ground, the water, et cetera, okay? Um, I guess maybe 4,000 years ago, they had the, the special 4,000-year-old Brita water filter, but we will never know this, <laughs> so like, okay. So what you wanna make sure is that your water is not hard, it doesn't have limestone in it. it doesn't, it's not laden with calcium oxide. It doesn't have magnesium and it doesn't have chlorine. So you wanna avoid any kind of water like that. You just, want, you just want clear, pure water with a little bit of minerals. And then you'll have a great tea that you can prepare um, for yourself, okay? So, okay. And then what I listed here was for the water, once you have a, a very good water that's pH neutral, okay, not acidic, contains a few minerals. These are, the, these are the temperatures that you wanna have your water boiling at, okay? So if you're, gonna, if you're gonna have green tea, okay, and you're gonna steep the green tea, you want the water up to 167 to 185 degrees, okay? Um, the Japanese teas are a little bit lower, the Chinese teas are a little bit higher, okay? If it's black tea, it's pretty hot. It'll, be go, it'll go up to 203 Fahrenheit. Uh, if it's aged tea, like the Puar teas, uh, these are also 203 Fahrenheit. And the Oolong teas are also 203 Fahrenheit. So the more oxidized it is, basically the higher the temperature you're gonna go, okay? So Clayton, just one question that came through. So herbal teas, um, those are, they're not listed on the slides. Would you consider them a separate kind of tea? Uh, I would, um, because herbal teas are teas that you can, you want to combine with other ingredients, whereas the kind of teas we're talking about in this presentation is more of like one part of the plant that's prepared a certain way. However, you can mix teas together too. And when we want to have like a special kind of tea that's medicinal, and herbal and has like a really huge multi-purpose function, you know, then that's, that's something where the tea quality is important, where you get the tea is important, and also like how long or how short you're boiling the tea changes the functions of the tea itself. Okay. And so to, so to keep it simple, like an herbal tea that's like a peppermint tea does, doesn't come from that plant. It comes from like the peppermint plant. Right. Or ginger tea comes from ginger. So it's just right. different plants. Right. Like okay. the peppermint tea will come from the peppermint leaf, right? Not but it's from the Camellia sinensis plant. Root. Right. Exactly. So. And how do you know what's the um, temperature? Is uh, what, what's, How do you figure out the right temperature and it's just boiling water sufficient? I mean, you'll still get a pretty good effect uh, with boiling water, but there's actually special pots that you can get that have the settings for these specific teas now, and it's, it's really easy. And so you, you kind of just program it and it takes it all the way up to that temperature. They're almost preset and they're great. And they, they're very good for pour over, pour over drinks like coffees and any kind of tea temperature that you're looking for, so yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Good questions. Okay. Oh, and one last one, because we got a curious audience. If you mix herbal teas with the base tea, then do you follow the temperature of the base, whether it's black or green? Uh, you want to follow the constitution of the person, and we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. It's a good question. Got it. Okay. That's all for okay. now. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go. We're going to go through this, and actually, we'll be able to have a Q&A towards the end, because um, I think we're going to get a lot of great questions from the audience, but uh, let's go back to the white teas, which have like, uh, they're very young and immature, okay? Uh, these undergo the least handling, they're the least oxidized, right? Um, they're made only from the buds, okay? And, or they could be a made from a mixture of the buds and leaves. And these are dried naturally, okay? But these are also consumed in the summertime because they actually counteract excessive heat. Okay, so they're very, very cooling. Whereas the green teas, okay, the nice beautiful color there. Um, these are produced mainly in China and Japan. Uh, there's over 1500 varieties. They have a high number of polyphenols and polyphenols are important because that's what gives it its uh, different antioxidant qualities. Um, compared to black teas, these, the green tea contains more iron, vitamins, and catechins, okay? Every country, in the world has their own unique way of harvesting and processing and drinking green tea. So, so it's, a, it's a very, very like, it can be a very, very connoisseur-like world, very, very rich and deep in culture, where there's even books and poems and, you know, pottery and stuff like that. And it's fun, like I have different teapots, teacups, you know, like this is one of my, my ceramic ones that I like, and it feels good in my hands, so, you know, it's a, there's tea culture to this whole thing. So, um, and every country, uh, they're gonna actually uh, pick the teas the most in the summertime, okay? And they're gonna drink, you're gonna wanna definitely drink green tea during the summertime, because green tea has a very cooling effect on the body heat as well. Uh, the oolong teas, which we talked about, that have a little more oil, these are 10 to 45% oxidized, uh, they have a lot more floral aroma. Um, they have woody notes. They're a little bit on the darker side uh, of color and hue compared to the green teas. They, they do have some slimming effects depending on the quality of the tea. And because of the oils, like we said before, they have anti-stress uh, properties. Uh, they can have sometimes a euphoric effect depending how sensitive you are, okay? And the concentration of these oils depends on, on how you roll the leaves. So this is all like a technique on how you're actually taking care and tending to the leaves, okay? Um, in Chinese medicine, we call that pao zhe. It's the technique of how you, how you prepare a plant, a branch, a leaf, a stem, etc. So oolong was very popular in Taiwan. Taiwan specializes in oolong and they probably, uh, they probably make 93% of the total production of oolong in the world. And so the, in Taiwan, they prefer the oolong tea over green tea and over black tea. So that's why you may hear a lot about oolong. Then you know, culturally, you're, you're talking to someone who probably enjoys a lot of Taiwanese culture. So that's how you start and engage the person. So, Okay, so when we look at poor tea, okay. Poor tea, this is, poor tea is amazing. Um, these are, the aged teas and poor is like the chief representative of the aged teas. Okay, uh, poor originally is from Yunnan, and it's an aged tea that over the centuries was actually used because because it actually uh, eroded very slowly. So nomadic tribes and ethnic groups in Asia would actually gravitate towards using the poor tea and traveling long distances with it. The poor tea also was amazing to eat because these groups actually ate like fatty type meats. And so the poor tea actually helped to cleanse out some of the fat from the food that they're eating too, because it's so, um, because of the way it's prepared. Poor tea is super amazing because it actually regulates uh, and stimulates digestion, but it actually can eliminate and reduce, not eliminate, but reduce cholesterol. It has a very powerful property like that. In fact, like if there's one tea in the world that you want to drink to reduce cholesterol, it's going to be the poor tea, basically. So 
So there's a unique method for processing the poorer tea. Um, and if you look to the right on this picture, it comes in many shapes. So in this case, it came in a block because once they, once they prepare it and they age it, they can turn it into many, many different shapes, okay? Sometimes it looks like this. It looks like a disc if you look at the top picture. And a lot of times you'll be given gifts when you meet a new person from China uh, instead of giving like Godiva chocolate or, <laughs> or even like ginseng, you know, that used to be really popular. They're going to want to give you really good aged poor tea. Okay. Uh, the two types of poor tea is sheng, which is raw. The raw rich poor tea actually has like medicinal properties, um, like reducing cholesterol. Um, these leaves are all are, are compressed, oxidized. Okay. They have very little contact with air, okay? And so they ferment for a long time. And the Sheng Fresh Pur tea actually can be fermented anywhere from 10 to 50 years. So you can imagine how long they've been traditionally making this tea. And if you're getting a, a like a 30 year old, a 50 year old poor tea, it sometimes can cost $10,000, $20,000. It actually goes up in value. And there was a time where it was almost like scavenged everywhere, just like ginseng, where people wanted it because they wanted, they wanted that medicinal value too. Uh, the other type of poor tea is called cooked. And so instead of waiting 10 to 50 years, you only have to wait 60 days, okay? <laughs> so this is a rapid fermentation process. They're gonna cook it, ferment it. The medicinal valuable, value won't be as strong, but the taste, and still the benefit to the digestion will still be there too. Okay, so there's the sheng, the raw poor tea. That's the one you wanna look for when you travel because that's gonna be in a hard disc or a hard block versus the cooked poor tea. And these are the different shapes. They actually make them look like a coin. They make it look like a disc. They even shape it like a mushroom if you look to the right. And what you do is you just break off a little piece you throw it in your cup or you throw it in your teapot and you add that 203 Fahrenheit boiling water, you know, and you put the thermos lid on, you're good for the whole day. So, okay. So why do I love poor tea so much? Poor tea to me is, is actually the best original ketogenic tea. So traditionally uh, in Tibet, there's, there's a tradition of drinking butter poor tea. And what happens is they'll take, they'll take yak butter, salt, and they'll churn the tea, the butter, and the salt, okay, until they get this nice, smooth, uh, really delicious tea, okay? And what happens is the Tibetans, they live up in the really high mountains, um, and so they can have like nomadic kind of behavior when they travel too. And so they needed a drink that basically gave them high energy, mixed well with yak milk, right? But also was good for their digestion. So poor tea, basically the Tibetans created the first ketogenic um, tea, basically. And that's where we get a lot of our grass-fed coffee ideas with other companies and stuff, so. Okay, so if you wanna- so That's yeah. like a bulletproof tea, basically, instead of bulletproof coffee. Exactly, so this is like, this is the original Bulletproof drink. And actually this is the drink that inspired uh, David Asprey to make Bulletproof coffee. But you can easily make this yourself. You can get grass-fed milk, okay? You can get Irish Kerrygold butter, <laughs> okay? Organic butter and a little bit of salt. You mix that up, you boil it, and it's great. And um, I've, met and I've met some and trained with some Tibetan monks and what they like to do is they like to then put a little dash of uh, lavender, okay? And it even uh, adds an even more cleansing flavor to it as well, so. Okay, so poor tea. So quick question, if we didn't have poor, I mean, is, what, what is, is there a difference in effect if we just use black tea? I would, I would actually take like an Earl Grey or a black tea as well, and you can do that too. You'll get a very good effect. You'll get a good taste. You'll get the ketogenic effect but you may not get the, uh, I would say, the cholesterol reducing effect. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, Got it. Yeah. So it's, it's basically the first bulletproof drink 
in, in history, so for sure. Okay, so poor tea, high energy, weight loss, reduced cholesterol, two thumbs up from our uh, Juara, Juara Shu team up here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so moving along, um, we want to talk about constitution. It's just like fun. It's just good stuff. Okay. So you're drinking your teas and we want to get into like picking the right tea for the right kind of constitution. And when we talk about constitutions, what we're talking about is the healthiness of your organ systems and how they integrate together. This is my personal definition of your constitution. Okay. So you could be the person that like, well, let's take a poll, right? Because we made a poll for this one, right, Meta? So, and yes, we'll take a poll. Um, and uh, while I put the poll up, I just had a quick question for those of you. Um, the question came in: What does ketogenic mean? How would you define that? Okay, so ketogenic means that you you actually um, are going to break down ketones for energy in your body. Okay, and so what's happening is you're not going to be you're not going to be breaking down, um, you're not going to be relying on sugar, like breads, uh, fruits, etc. but you're actually going to put your body into a ketogenic state. So now you're changing your source of energy. And what happens is you're going to start breaking down some fat in your body because you're in this ketogenic state. So it changes, it changes your blood sugar a little bit and it makes your body start um, investing in different energy systems that reduces fat. Okay. So, Thank question. you. All right. So here's the fun question. We're going to talk about your constitution. Uh, so this is all about you. Questions. Which of these apply to you? This is multiple choice. We're going to talk about your lifestyle. Yeah. So, so we, now that we learned about teas, now we're going to learn about you so then we can match the teas to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> And we kind of made, we kind of put these up there so you kind of get the idea of what we're talking about. And you can be one of these people or you can be two or three of these people, actually. <laughs> like, it just depends on your own constitution. So, so which of these apply to you? Are you sensitive to caffeine? Do you easily get palpitations, anxiety, restlessness? Um, do you have a strong stomach? Can you eat anything and not get digestive issues? Okay. Are you the guy that can like, or girl that can drink alcohol all night and then not feel weak at all the next day and get up and run like three miles in the morning? Cause, Cause I'm not that guy. So, uh, do you easily gain weight from eating any kind of carbohydrate or sugar or do you see, do you see food and then the scale goes up? You know, that's a bad constitution. Uh, do you have seasonal allergies? Are you allergic to pollen, dust, mold? Etc. Or do you easily catch cold with any temperature change? Um, this is a specific type of person with different kinds of immune issues. Or do you have a super sensitive stomach? Um, do you have to be careful with what you eat? Like down to the T, you can't, you know, you can't have soy sauce, you can't have any little salt, or you can't have sugar. It depends. Okay, so I think that's all okay. of them, right? Oh, and uh, one more. Do you get significant cramps during your period? So. God, those people <laughs> voting, they're, they're, they're deliberately. So I'm going to count down from five, four, three. <laughs> oh, more, two, <laughs> one. All right, we're ending the poll. So. See the results. How yep. interesting. Oh. I love this poll thing. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so 39% of you uh, are super sensitive to caffeine. You easily get palpitations, high anxiety, or restless. 33% of you, you have a strong stomach, you can eat anything and not get digestive issues. That's good. 22%, when you drink alcohol, you feel weaker the next day. Okay. And then 39%, the tie with the sensitive caffeine group, uh, you easily gain weight from carbs and sugar, okay? And you, you gain weight the second you look at food, just like me, okay? 11% <laughs> uh, have seasonal allergies. Uh-huh, that's a big group too. 
and 6% catching COVID temperature change. 28% has a sensitive stomach. You have to be careful of what you eat. Very common. And 22%, okay? You're getting cramps at the period. Okay, great. So we're gonna talk about this, actually. So let's see. Um, let's see. So for the first, actually, yeah, let's, let's bring up the poll again, because I'll do it this way, and then I'll, then I'll add some extras that I'll recommend. And we can, we can also like send out a, a text or an email message later about like some of the stuff if it's not on a slide. So uh, if you're easily sensitive to caffeine and, but you're getting like anxiety, palpitations, restlessness, you actually have, you're in the category of having possibly a hyperactive sympathetic nervous system. You're a little bit, you're already revved up basically. It doesn't really shut down. Okay, and so you may be in that category where we have to actually pick, pick more like the oolong or types of herbal teas that will actually calm the body, calm the heart down, okay? So if you're the person that has the strong stomach and can eat anything and not get any digestive issues, we're just gonna give you water because that's great. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong there, so. Uh, if you're drinking alcohol and you feel weaker the next day, uh, there's a couple things there. We, we have to like bolster the liver. You know, that's when you want to get into like the milk thistle teas. Or we have different liver type of detox teas in Chinese medicine as well. Um, and there's also some teas and some like special herbs we use that changes like just the bacterial content in the stomach that can actually help as well too. Okay, uh, we can, if you easily gain weight from carbs or anything else, then you wanna head towards that ketogenic tea or do like intermittent fasting because you have to basically, you basically have to figure out how slow or fast your blood sugar is reacting to breaking down gluten and glucose and carbohydrates. And then you have to like get a handle on that. So, but, there's really good teas for that that can actually increase your metabolism um, and balance balance how well your body can break down food. Okay? Um, if you have seasonal allergies, we actually are in that moment right now where we are experiencing seasonal allergies. Some people may be sneezing more so that, you know, we don't want to panic and think, oh my gosh, like, like I may be like reinfected or be exposed to COVID. Actually, right now, I'd say a lot of the majority of people who may be sneezing or may be actually having their regular allergy type of seasonal symptoms. So we want to be aware of that. And there's some great herbs for that as well, um, which we're going to get into a little bit later. Um, if you're easily catching cold when you switch temperatures, again, that's like an immune system thing, but there might be you might need actually, believe it or not, something like cinnamon or ginger. And what happens is that balances uh, the shield of how your body can shift the climate. Okay, so right now it's too weak. It's like a thin piece of paper that can, that can rip, whereas we want it to be in a, like a nice screen that can protect your body, okay? So we wanna make it like a, need a shield, basically. So we'll talk about that. Uh, if you have like a sensitive stomach or a weak stomach, or if you get full too quickly, you actually have a, what we call like a deficient stomach. And then you wanna, you wanna start getting um, teas, like even like a barley type tea, because that drains dampness and accumulation out of the stomach. Uh, hawthorn or shanza is a great, is a great herbal, or hawthorn flakes you can get. It's a great herbal type tea that actually starts to break down and um, gets like phlegm and stuff out of your digestive system to start cleaning it out, okay? And then we're gonna talk about the significant cramps during my period group. We have a couple of great slides for you towards the end where we'll talk about um, one of the best uh, Chinese herbs for that and also like a, a soup recipe as well. So yeah, um, let's, let's go on to here. What I listed here also are some other options. If you have, if, 
if you have eyes that you want to make stronger, believe it or not, goji berries or gochiza in Chinese medicine is amazing. It also is amazing to raise your energy. Again, if you're in that category of someone that has digestive issues, as well as like a little bit of like, uh, like type two diabetes, like that kind of thing, and you're gaining weight, you want to look at the warmer type herbal teas like ginger, fennel, okay? If we're thinking about the brain and you're worried about the brain and you know there might be a history of Alzheimer's, or Parkinson's or something like that, uh, and you want to talk about brain health, then you want to look at involving ginkgo seeds, turmeric, curcumin, coconut oils, because these actually penetrate the blood brain barrier. And they actually, they actually decrease inflammation in the brain as well. So that's why they're very important. Okay. And that stressed out person that we talked about, uh, that uh, is hyper having anxiety at night, uh, you want to actually have seeds, and the seeds would be like swanzaren, baiziren, or even a very strong aromatic root. This is a very popular one. It's valerian root. It's something that like you have to keep in like two jars because the fire department will come to your apartment if you leave the jar open, <laughs> kind of like a darian root, like in Malaysia. <laughs> but anyway, those strong, strong type of oils, it just... By the time it reaches our brain, it makes our brain slow down and, and basically calm down, okay? If, if you're worried about your cholesterol, again, we wanna go back to the Bulletproof Tea, Kuar Tea, okay? And one of the best immune system herbs, and sometimes it can be a little cloying because of some oils, but is actually astragalus or Huangqi, okay? And Huangqi is amazing because it, it can also be amazing for the skin be good for lymphatics, but it's great for the lungs. And what I did was I took combinations of these and also some of the other ones I mentioned earlier, just to make like a shield for your body, okay? So we call it, we, we call it like the Corona Shield, but it's, it's basically making your body a little bit more boosted immune, because if we can boost your immune system, then you can like feel invincible, like you can take on anything, so. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is like a rundown of some constitutional suggestions. What's the difference between turmeric and curcumin? I thought curcumin is a part of the turmeric. Right, they're just different. I think they're just different parts of the plant. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, but we can get back to you on it. I don't want to. I don't want to give you just like a, a an answer off the top of my head. Yeah. But the main the main factor with both of them um, is that well. One main factor is this, you can cook more easily with turmeric, basically, because it's almost like using like a curry. Um, so there's turmeric lattes you can get at some coffee shops now. Uh, there's turmeric teas, and I think Jara, Jara has, uses yeah. a lot of turmeric. It's like, yeah, we use, yeah. Uh, we actually yeah. use the curcumin because uh, for us, I was just asking if, it, if, if it's different here. We use a curcumin as a natural occurring compound within the turmeric that has antioxidant properties. But the turmeric is curcuma longa, Latin name, so probably where that name came from. But that's just a little... Drawing down the herbal. Different like parts it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's common ingredients that are used in different parts of the world and in different ways, but, but, yeah. um, but those are that we use it for too. <laughs> Yeah, if you can, if you have a way of taking anything we're talking about and using it in your daily cooking, that's a win. So if you can get the fresh ingredient and cook with it. For instance, coconut oil, you can cook, you can cook anything with coconut oil. You can cook fish, you can cook lamb, you can cook vegetables. It's a great, it's a great oil, but it's actually gonna help your brain too. So it's a it's like a double win there, right? So yeah. Uh, um, okay, so, and then these are beautiful flowers, right? But these beautiful flowers are so effective at fighting toxicity. Uh, for instance, the chrysanthemum tea, if you're the kind of person that gets seasonal allergies, right? And the chrysanthemum tea is the, uh, it's the bottom picture, okay? But if you're getting seasonal allergies and your eyes are burning, then it's the chrysanthemum tea that you want to have. And you can easily get chrysanthemum flowers that are dried and, and um, prepared to be just mixed with uh, 
mixed with hot water, and then you can drink that naturally. And mix it with some lemon and honey as well. Uh, the Japanese honeysuckle flower is amazing. We use this a lot for sore throat toxicity. Uh, green tea again, perfect for the summer. But green tea in the winter time, not so good, okay? Because teas and plants have their own special temperature qualities. And the green teas, as we said, and the white teas, they're very cold, okay? But because they're very cold and you're in a cold environment, you, want, you don't want to double dip, basically, and make your body cold from inside. It, it will hurt and not help the digestive system, especially even if you have you know, things like Crohn's or gastritis. You don't want to have a green tea in the wintertime. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to any, any kind of a herbalist, basically. So in the fall, you can have the black or red teas, okay? And in the winter, you can have the poorer teas, right? And the reason why these, these are different than the green and white teas is because that oxidation process, in a sense, cooks the tea leaves, okay? And so that they can be used um, in those harsher, colder seasons and times. Okay, uh, I know we're gonna make sure we get through all our material here, guys. So uh, definitely we wanna talk about a woman's herb for female hormonal support, and that would be Donggui, okay? Uh, Donggui is an amazing herb. It, it's sometimes called the female ginseng. If you look at the, to the right, that's like a whole piece of Donggui, but a lot of times we get it in slices. Okay, it nourishes uh, the blood. It actually invigorates blood circulation. And a lot of times when we get, sorry, when, when women get <laughs> uh, cramps, basically you're not producing enough blood and you're not circulating enough blood um, through your organs, okay, through the uterus and the womb and stuff. So, so what happens is you need to take the plant at the right time of the month, okay, um, to nourish and produce blood, and then you need to move that blood. And that blood will actually also circulate and help the liver organ as well, okay? But this is the funniest thing. You know, like people take a piece of ginseng, sometimes they chew it and they, you know, they're working at their desk. Or sometimes you take astragalus and you chew a piece. Nobody takes a piece of dongwe by itself and just chews it walking down the street or something like that. So. How can you take Donggui if it's so great? So um, what we want to do is we want to take Donggui and we want to balance it. So one of the best solutions is actually there's a very famous black chicken soup where the feathers, the bone, and the meat is all black, okay? And it's, this is a woman's soup. This is literally a menstrual cycle soup that nourishes blood. And it has, an, it has a very strong, amazing taste to it. Yes, I've tried it, <laughs> okay. Uh, so the ingredients, uh, these, are the, these are the actual herbs we would use. So I got a picture of that for us. If you wanted to make the soup, you can add astragalus, which is the long stick in the middle. Um, the black chicken you can get in Chinatown. You want red dates, which is on the right. You want the goji berries, gochiza, which or wolf berries on the left, dongwe roots, Okay, and you want chuan shang is actually an herb that will invigorate blood too. But if you don't want to add all these ingredients, you can simply just use the goji berries, red Chinese dates, licorice, astragalus, and dongwe. With the chicken, you'll have an amazing nourishing soup that you can drink all week. Okay. And that brings us to our, our last interesting topic, which we promised. But this is called which brew is good for you, okay? So, so, so in this <laughs> we've got one quick poll. Is this shall I? Is this now where I'm gonna pop it up? Because um, yeah. we just had a few minutes left. But as we launch the last part, we can't ignore the other part of the conversation. And for tea drinkers out there, some of you are coffee drinkers. Um, right. <laughs> get your energy. What brews for you? <laughs> Which brew is for you? Do you right. want energy and turn your brain off? Which brew is for you? Uh, people are answering faster. <laughs> because okay, people, yeah. This is going to be the lightning round. We're just going to give it five seconds. All right, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. one.
All right. Ooh, one more coming in. All right. Here we go. <laughs> oh gosh. Everyone's ending poll now. All right. Sure, that's sure the result that. guys. Oh, we're, we're a tea group. <laughs> Yay. Cheers. Okay. Okay. But I, I drink coffee too, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a coffee and tea snob, but okay. Depends on what I need to do. Soda juice. Okay. Let's get through this. This is really important. Okay. You're at home. You now have a zoom life. Okay. You have to do all your work at home, but you have to keep focused. Do you pick coffee or do you pick tea? So what happens is coffee will give you an immediate spike and then it'll start to dip down. But tea, which also has caffeine as well, but it has this thing called theme and theme will allow the caffeine to be released slower. So you won't get as high of a spike, but you'll get a consistent longer time of being alert, okay? How does this work? So it's really the buds and the young sprouts of the tea leaf that has more theine in it than the older tea leaves, okay? Theine and caffeine are both alkaloids. What's an alkaloid? An alkaloid is, is what gives properties in our physiological functions like anti-carcinogenic, analgesic, okay? Antioxidant, these are all alkaloid properties. Okay, and theine and caffeine are actually alkaloids. Believe it or not, caffeine is an alkaloid. So theine will actually stimulate the central nervous system and the cardiovascular system by enlarging the diameter of the blood vessels in your cerebral cortex. Whereas caffeine will actually directly affect the blood circulation, stimulating, stimulating your blood vessels and actually will increase your heart rate. So one is actually kind of turning the brain on a little more the other one's speeding up your heart rate. Both will have an effect of like you feeling really alert and everything, but the coffee will then die down because your heart rate's gonna come back down. Whereas the theme will actually keep the circulation in the brain open a little longer, okay? So thanks to the tannic acids that are present in the teas, this prevents the caffeine from just being released and then dropped, okay? And that's why the tea will actually give you the longer alertness Okay, and if you never really felt that before, the problem is, I hate to say this, and, and Meta and I have talked about this, the problem is you probably never drank real tea before because unfortunately, a lot of times the tea we get in the West or in America or in Europe, it's really tea dust. It's not good quality tea leaves. Um, think about how much you pick a great poppy bean. Well, put that effort into picking a great tea leaf and you're gonna find that if you have a strong, amazing tea leaf, it can make you as, as wider or wider awake than coffee sometimes, okay? So tea is infused with the caffeine and the oils will actually then slow down the release of the caffeine and so you get the, uh, the effect. So basically in brief, tea is gonna act like a stimulant, but the coffee is gonna act like an excitant. excitant so. We had a question, I think. Sorry, I had to blast through that one because we're, we're running out of time. So, um, so there, there was a couple questions I, I kind of saw earlier, like where do I get good tea and something just now about coffee, which I couldn't catch, but. Um, there's, um, there are several, the, the, there was one on poor actually, it was a while ago, it was quite, um, a, are there, I can, are there any contraindications for having these teas, um, taking kumadin? Kumadins are. Can you recommend good sources of poor teas or good recipes for portions of butter and poor tea? Um, is it best to drink poor tea only during the day if you're sensitive to caffeine? So that was on the topic of um, of that. So if we could quickly blaze through that, I think we do have um, about one more after that. Yeah. Um, so there's actually quite a few good vendors that can you can get great tea from. Um, one of them is called Camellia sinensis. They're based out of Canada. And another one is uh, actually called, uh, I think it's actually called Red Blossom Tea. But what I can do is put together a small list for everyone and we can share it um, with our, our um, viewers. Does that sound good? So. That would be great. Yes, because another question was, where do you purchase real tea in loose leaf versus in bags? So I think it's, you know, it's probably easier too and better if we compile a list 
Um, and then we will send it to you because we know we always do a follow up with a recording also, but also additional resources. So that would be great. I, I would actually love that too. <laughs> and don't forget, you want to get the blocks if you're going to do the ketogenic bulletproof teas. Okay. So we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll find some good ones that we can order from. So, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So I think um, we're pretty much out of time. Um, but I just wanted to close off and uh, let's see, I'm gonna close off with my stream because Plain has a really, really generous offer. Um, he has offered 30 minutes of a free challenge session and herbal consultation with Dr. Shu. So you can ask whatever you want on anything. As you can see, he knows <laughs> a lot. So I like to play the joke. I, I like to play the thing of ask the ask all the crazy questions and see if he can answer because he probably can. Just mention Jawara um, and there you go. Just, just email reception.shu at gmail.com. Um, and again, that's for the attendees. So, so thank you for, for joining and I hope you take advantage of that offer. Um, up next, uh, switching topics, but also all about you know, personal growth and expansion. We have Adam Georgie, for those of you who are, um, into classical music. He is, he's also another amazing uh, musician. He's got over a million followers on Facebook. He goes and, and performs at Carnegie Hall and around the world. And uh, he and I were having a very interesting conversation that during these times that are quite, um, you know, stressful, he actually went through a personal journey of expanding on his creativity. And so it's going to be talking about like, how do we in tough times tap into that higher brain where we can actually thrive, grow, and tap into our genius. So it'll be a great dialogue. And we hope you're able to join uh, for that one. If you want to present, or if you know someone who wants to present, um, if they have a specialty or expertise, uh, and they just have an, audition, an audience and translating online since now we're moving virtual so quickly, because we've done it, we can help, we want to support. How do you actually do that? Let me show you. If you go to our website, there is just the blogs on the homepage, or you can also get it from just the blog page. And here you will see a section that says Google form here. We want to feature you, your expertise into your community. So please just fill that form in. Uh, we will contact you and just have a conversation to see how we can best put it together. Um, so one last offer that we are actually having for you is uh, for those of you who are there, uh, we'd love to offer you one of our free samples. And this is our best selling product and we're offering it because it really is a moment of self care. Um, I, this is one of our first products and it's still one of our best selling because um, not only is it just great in terms of hydrating and moisturizing, but it really gives you that moment of calm and that moment of centeredness. And, and that is what is um, absolutely valuable. You, I will send, I will give you the link because um, this is, you would just go to our site and uh, you would purchase, actually you wouldn't purchase because it's free, um, but it is free for the next two hours. Uh, right now we've, we've changed the price on it. So please take advantage of it. And actually, if you share this to other people, I really, um, that's totally okay too. So, <laughs> so I'll put it in the chat, uh, the link for this. And um, oh, I'll put it in the chat after uh, I stop screen sharing. Um, and let's see, because for some reason it won't let me do both at once. Um, and if you please contact us, this is all of Dr. Shu's contact information. Please check it out. Uh, but again, we'll give you all this information when we send the follow up. And here we go. I'm sending the link. If you guys, uh, let's see. There you go. That is the link that you could just click on, get your sample. Um, and like I said, it'll be, it'll be open for two more hours. So please enjoy. And I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I hope you've got some great information. Thank you so much, Dr. Shu. Lots of information. And I'm always, I'm now excited to. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone have a good night. Uh, stay safe, be healthy, be well. And we will yeah. see you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.